What's going on, fellow Photoshop enthusiasts? Today, I'm gonna attempt to show you all the tips, tricks, secrets that I know about the brush tool. This is most likely gonna be the most difficult tutorial I make because there's so much to cover, but I'm gonna try my best to be concise and very effective in the way I explain it. So let's get right to it. In order to access the brush tool, you can click on the icon for the brush tool or you can use the shortcut B. I like to use shortcuts, so let's press B and you'll see that now we have the paintbrush selected. Now you'll see there's a circle here. This circle represents the size of our brush. Before we continue, please press F6. That's a shortcut to get to colors. With the colors, you can select whichever color you want. You can toggle between the foreground and background color by hitting X. Whichever one's visible in front, that is the one that you'll be painting with. If you hit X, you see that the foreground and background colors change and now you're painting with the other colors. Now if you switch colors around and you want to go back to black and white, simply press D and it will take you back to the default colors. So now that we have that covered, let's go over here and click on this and take a look at what we have. So in order to change the size, you can toggle this back and forth here or you can press the open brackets and closed brackets and that will change the size of the brush. Bear in mind this number here. When I'm toggling the size, it's changing accordingly. If you want to be very accurate, you can click it. You can even type it in. So you can type in 199 and that'll be the size of the brush. And now it's that size. Let's click it open again and see what other options we have. Over here, there's something called import brushes. If you're doing some nifty cool things and these brushes aren't enough over here where you'll see there's folders that you can open up and select which brush you're using. So we'll be using the hard brush to start off. But if you want to use a different one, you can always import it if you have it downloaded to your computer. This right here, if you click one of these dots, you can adjust the roundness. So this is a very round form. This is going to be more of an oval shape. And with this, you can adjust the angle. Keep in mind, as you're doing this, you'll see the angle over here change. So if we move it up here, that'll be around 90 degrees and it'll say 90. Also keep in mind, you can always adjust these by coming over to whatever number is next to it and scrubbing to the right or scrubbing to the left and it will change that figure. You can do the same thing with opacity and flow but we'll get to that in a second. Let's go back and cover everything you need to know here. So if we change that to let's say 48 degrees, you will see that it actually paints now starting out with this shape. Now with a perfect circle, this doesn't make too much sense. However, you have a lot of brushes to choose from here. And there's, let's say, special effect brushes where you'll have splatter brushes and you need to make it look like a different type of brush. So you might change the angle and now it looks different. So there is a point to it. Please keep in mind that you can change the angle here and here. So let's now talk about hardness. Hardness is very, very important. What does hardness dictate? Well, if we lower hardness and we're drawing here, you'll see that the edges are not as sharp. And I'll actually give you a real life example of why that's important. If I zoom in on this image here and bear in mind when you have, let's actually change this back to a normal circle. Remember to press enter when you're done manipulating something in here so that it saves. So let's say I wanted to cut away the arm a little bit. If I have my hardness all the way at 100 and let's say I select the color black. By the way, you can make a selection of any color by holding down alt. So let's say we're holding down alt and I want to paint in this yellow. Now I'm painting in this yellow. If I want to hold down Alt and sample this color here, now it's painting in this color. Let's say I want to remove some of this arm here. If I select this color and I'm at 100% hardness, you'll see that it's a very straight line, but it doesn't add up to the way it is here because of the shadows and everything else, the lines kind of fade. So to make it look more real, you can soften up the edge. So let's say we bring it down to 15%, press Enter. And if we zoom in here, you'll see that if I cut away of the arm, it still kind of resembles the way it was before it. And this might be even hard. And also we need to change opacity to 100 and I'll cover opacity in a second. 
but you'll see that this looks more realistic than when we were, when we were doing it and it was a very, very harsh edge transition. I'm a big proponent of shortcuts, so I'm going to show you the shortcut for hardness. In order to create your brush and make it harder or softer, you can use the keyboard shortcuts shift and then use the bracket keys. And if you make the bracket key, the open bracket key and you click it a lot, you'll see that your brush has soft edges at the end of it versus if we hold down shift and press the close bracket key a lot, you'll see that now it's a very sharp edges. So that is how you adjust hardness. Now I'd like to show you my favorite way to toggle these features. If you hold down alt and you right click and hold the right click, you'll see that it shows diameter, hardness, and opacity. If you move your cursor to the right, you're going to see the diameter increase. If you hope move your cursor to the left, you're going to see a decrease. If you move your cursor up, you're going to see the hardness decrease. And if you move it down, you're going to see the hardness increase. And that is the way that I prefer to work because you can actually see both the size and the hardness in real time. Let's now quickly take a look at what opacity is. This is one of the most important features of the brush tool. Also keep in mind when you're using other tools like eraser tool or you're working on layer mask, they all work the same. So these features are very important. So for opacity, let's say I want to get rid of this by coloring it in black. So what I could do is I could hold down alt and select the black as the color. You'll see it's in the foreground, so it's going to color black. And if I set this to 40%, you'll see that when I start coloring in black, it's coming out kind of gray because it's a weak black. It's only 40% of that color. However, if I bring that up to say 90 and now I cover over it, you'll see that most of it comes out, but 10% is still see-through. So if you want to completely remove it, we can select 100% opacity and you'll see that now when we go over it, we can completely take it out of the picture and opacity is used in many ways so please remember opacity as i've mentioned a million times i love shortcuts so instead of coming up here and punching in exact numbers you can actually hit numbers on your keyboard so if you press the number two it's going to change to 20 percent four forty percent six sixty percent zero a hundred percent so on and so forth if you don't want to go by increments of 10 you can simply press 23 and it's going to change to 23 56 just make sure you press them quickly next to each other if you do five and then you wait two seconds and you do six it's going to go to 60 so you want to make sure you do 56 so it's actually showing you 56 percent opacity just another reminder just as i showed you guys with the angle you can do the same thing with opacity where you can hold and if you move to the left it'll move it down if you move to the right it'll move it up so i showed you guys that if you press f6 you can hide the color panel and you can show the color panel and you can work with it here. However, here's another cool secret that I know about Photoshop. If you hold down shift, alt, right click, you can actually select it right here and you could see it all the way on the right moving as well. And this is really cool because, especially if you're working um, with just painting a drawing, not fixing up a photo, this is very, very convenient and I use it a lot. So if you're wondering what this is, this is the blend modes and I'm going to do a whole different tutorial on blend modes. It's basically the way the colors will interact with one another on different layers or same layers and it's quite a complex feature and I don't want to explain all these in this video otherwise it's going to be two hours long and only four people will watch it. Now is a good time to mention that pressing F5 brings up a very important brush panel. Here you can see all the different types of brushes. You can adjust size, you can adjust angle, roundness. A lot of these things that we were covering are accessible here. But one that's really important that you can't find elsewhere is the spacing. Why is spacing important? Because you'll notice that sometimes you're brushing. So let's set it to this. Let me change the color back to white. And you'll see that if I'm painting here, this is kind of an extreme example. Let's bring it so it's here. So sometimes you'll draw a line and you'll say, ah, those are jagged edges. I wanna have just a straight edge. What you can do 
is you can set this to zero or close to zero and you'll see that it's nice and smooth now and if you zoom in you'll see that there's not many sharp jagged edges the flow rate is very very important and you can set it over here so for instance let's see if we set this to 20 what happens so if i'm painting with white you'll see that it even takes a little bit of time to catch up to my stroke and the stroke at the beginning is not fully opaque even though i'm at 100 percent opacity so it has more of a brush feel to it also if you increase the spacing You'll see that here, they're very, very spaced out. However, if the flow is 100%, you'll see that without changing anything else, it's going to look a little bit more put together. And again, this was a little bit of an aggressive example. So let's change the flow back to 10%. And you'll see that here, you can see the transitional circles. Whereas if I change it to 100, now you can't really see that anymore. Also keep in mind, in order to change the flow, you can press shift and then a number. So if you press shift two, you'll see go to 20%, shift three, 30%. And bear in mind, it works the same way as the last example. Shift five, wait two seconds, shift six, it goes to 60%. But if you want it to be 56%, you press them quickly, 56, 78, 62 and it'll work that way too and again it saves you time and it's good to know these keyboard shortcuts so now let's cover the smoothing tool and i purposefully did this but as you can see and this happens a lot by default sometimes i can't select smoothing why because if you press f5 you are going to see that in the brushes panel here, the smoothing is not checked off. So you want to check it off so that you have access to it and can change it. I don't know why Photoshop does it this sometimes, but sometimes it'll uncheck it. So once you make sure that smoothing is checked and you can adjust this, let's play around with the smoothing tool. And what this is, is it smooths out your lines, which can be super helpful. So let's say this is at 2%. We're going to make it very low and I'm going to change this color to white and I'm going to attempt to create an outline around these two beautiful dancers. If I go ahead and I start making this outline, you'll see that I could do a relatively good job, but because I'm using a mouse, it's kind of jaggedy and janky. And if I control minus and zoom out, you'll see that it's just not the greatest thing and it doesn't look very professional. Now, I'm going to attempt to make it look a bit more professional. Let's say I put it up to 90. It's going to smooth out small jerky movements by me and make it a little bit more smoother and look a little more sleek and professional. And it's so, so cool, especially if you guys like to use the brush tool. Um, it's so helpful that I just use this a lot. Now, let me zoom out and you'll see how much nicer that looks. I want to show you guys a quick little trick if you want to draw straight lines with a brush tool. So if you click somewhere and you're trying to draw a line of here, if I try to do it, I'll do a relatively good job. But as you can see, it's definitely not a straight line. So the way around that is you can click once and then shift click and it will always create completely straight lines from the last point which can help you create some cool looking, professional looking shapes. Let me give you an example since we're working with colors. Let's say you see how her hair is a bit wavy here. If I just wanted to cut it down and make a straight line here, what I would do typically is I would increase the size. I would go take a look at hardness. Yeah, around 46% is fine. I would have to remember to select this color and then I would click here and then I would shift click, let's say here, and you'll see that it just cuts it as a straight line. And it's a really, really, really helpful tool. I believe, especially when I'm using logo design, I'm working with the brush tool, it's very helpful. But I digress. Let me show you the shortcut if you want to use the angle. So if you want to adjust the angle of your brush tool, let's press F5. And let's select this brush tool here. And I think it'll be a better example. So I'll expand the brush. And you'll see that angle becomes important here. And I could change the angle by pressing the left and right arrow keys in order to change the angle that I'll be painting with. Let's select the color white. And you'll see that this, and if I change the angle, now it's painting slightly differently. And you could create really cool effects that way. 
And one of the ways to adjust it is you can simply just scrub left and right. If you do right and left, it'll move it in one degree increments. And if you shift right and left, it'll move it in 15 degree increments. Now that we have that down, let's press Control Z to get rid of these weird white blotches. And I will go back to a regular hard round brush tool. And now let's cover something that's really cool here. And by the way, this, if you turn this on, this is just if you're working on a stylus. If you're applying more pressure, it's going to make the color deeper and richer and more opacity and everything else. So it's something that helps to adjust your brush settings with pressure on your stylus. This one is a very, very, very cool feature. Again, I've used it plenty of times when creating logos. In order to show this one, I'm actually going to turn this whole picture into black. And since we're all about using the brush tool, let's go ahead and use the brush tool for that. So I'll select this color. I'll make sure it's selected in the foreground. And I'll simply go over this. And since opacity is 100, it's completely removing it from this layer. I know that this isn't the most professional way to work. You should have layer masks open and non-destructive, blah, blah, blah. But for the purpose of this video, let's just toy with it that way. Now take a look at how cool symmetry is. Let's say I create a diagonal line here. I can move this up and down. I could use these pointers to adjust the window. And let's say I'm happy with this. And, and you'll see if I go outside. So right now I'm adjusting it. If I go hover outside of it, I can actually rotate it. So let's leave it here. This will be the line of symmetry. What does that mean? If we hit check, we see this line of symmetry. Let's make our color white. Let's make sure the foreground is white. And now when we start painting with it, you'll see how cool this is. So let's say I wanted to create a butterfly, right? We see a butterfly right here. So let's stick with a butterfly. I could do something like this. And as I'm painting, it's automatically going to follow it pretty much identically and flip it over that line of symmetry, which is really cool. Now, if you think this is a cool effect, I'm going to show you something even more cool. So let's control Z and get out of here. And I will show you one that is awesome. So the mandala and the radial are really, really cool to play with. So check this out. The segment count, let's say you make it 10. So whatever you draw here is actually going to be symmetrical to this, 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 this. So it's going to be reflected over 10 times. And I'll show you what kind of cool effects you can get with that. So let's say we do something like this. Look at that. Look at how groovy this can get. And it's kind of really, really interesting, the amounts of things that you could do with these. You could create some really intricate patterns, and it's so much of a time saver. Like, imagine creating this without that radial symmetry tool. That would take you forever. So I really like this tool. There's a lot of cool things about it. Now, I hope I covered a lot of things that you guys weren't aware of in Photoshop, and I know there's a bazillion more things. So please, please do leave comments. I'm always trying to learn. I'm using Photoshop CC and they're always updating, always new tricks come out. So please point them out. Let's grow as a community. Let's be more skilled. Let's create. Art is amazing and helpful for everyone. I'm in quarantine times right now. This is April 18th and I'm going to be sitting around creating a bunch of more tutorials. I hope you guys appreciate them and I'm sorry if it's a long video but I was trying to fit everything in and again I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you in the next video. And if you're an artist and you create, please drop a link or whatever you want in the comment section, whatever page you want us to follow, whatever art you create. I'd love to support your art as well. Thank you.